You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionPit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash VIX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the option block all right, everybody. That music means it is time once again for everyone's favorite bi-weekly options extravaganza known around the globe as the Option Block. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever-exciting, at least we tend to think so, Options Insider Radio Network. Hope all of you enjoyed the, the taste everyone got, the celebration, the parte that was Pro Q&A 100 yesterday. Ended up kicking off just an extravaganza of content. We let everybody in. We opened the floodgates so everybody could enjoy not just Pro Q&A 100 with the Oracle of New Hampshire, Mr. Matt Amberson, taking on all comers, answering all your questions. A lot of great questions coming in that. We also did more questions on Options Boot Camp with Mr. Passarelli, so that was fun. And we even threw in a little bit of the old school Options Insider Radio interviews, talking with everything going on in the land of Mayak. So it was just a trifecta of great content. Everyone got to enjoy it. Went out to the full network feed as well on demand. So if you missed it, you're getting it on demand as well. It's because we like you folks out there. Of course, if you want to get a full taste of everything that's going on in the world of the pros, only one place to go, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Of course, if you're on the on-demand side, you can listen to that full pro Q&A session right now. Because it's 100, we put it out there for everyone. All in sundry can enjoy it. So you get a little bit of a taste of what's cooking over there on the pro side. We also do options oddities every Friday. Myself and the Rock Lobster use a lot of different platforms, including a little thing called Trade Alert, to find some cool, unusual activity for you folks to analyze and, and trade in your own accounts. Of course, live access to this, everything else we do throughout the week, the chat rooms, the giveaways, all sorts of fun, early access to a lot of great content, including all that OIC stuff. It's hitting the pro side before it's hitting 
the rest of the network. So a lot of fun to be had. The options insider.com slash pro is the place to go. And of course, there's a lot of fun to be had on the show today. Let's see who's joining us. First, let's go out to the dark, the stormy, the horrific hinterlands of Maine, <laughs> where we are joined once again by the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from optionpit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show. I hear you are hijacking our feed for your members, sir. Uh, I was thinking about doing it, but I actually had some guilty pangs. Our lawyers. I, I, I know people pay the hard dough for this. Our stuff. lawyers are are sending a season desist as we speak. So, um, but uh, I, I toyed with the idea. I toyed with the idea. But you know what was surprising? My students actually thought that was pretty nice. They liked that idea. They should. That's a great thing. <laughs> you were giving them a great gift. They should be yeah. quite thankful. But you know, you're going to earn the ire of the super producer if you do that. So you better watch out, sir. Tread carefully in those waters is all I'm going to say. You don't want to earn the ire of the super producer. Lest bad things. No more umbrage crates for you if you earn the ire of the super producer. Let me just put it that way. All right. <laughs> Let's keep on rolling. Let's go out to the quiet hinterlands of Chicago, known as St. Charles, where we are joined by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Manager. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the show to you as well. Always good to be here, and um, <clears throat> I, I I think that's a, a unique business thing that, that Andrew's got going on, charging people to listen to Mark's paid content. Very interesting. There we go. He's one of those uh, old-school cable stealers from back in the 80s. He's just brought it into the modern era. He's, uh, that's, what, <laughs> that's what it made me think of, yeah, he the, shows, the cheater cable box. Exactly. He shows up with the Andrew cable box and says, here, pay me 100 bucks, and you get all the showtime that you could possibly want. That's Andrew's business. That's what he's really doing out there in the shores of me. He says he's doing his options thing. He's really installing shady cable boxes. And also joining us, it's good to check back in with him on the old SIBO hot seat. He's been traveling hither and yon, including to Chicago recently, but we couldn't make the connection. He is the flow master himself, Mr. Henry Schwartz, holding down the SIBO hot seat again this week. Mr. Flow Master, welcome back to the show. Where have you been traveling hither and yon since we last chatted with you, sir? Uh, this is indeed a travel month. I was Chicago last week for the 50th birthday party for SIBO. And then I was in Toronto yesterday with some uh, some trillion dollar pension fund managers, which was pretty cool. And I'm back. But then I'm in Chicago next week for a couple of days. Uh, Going to see some people at a, a wealth summit out there. So it's been a lot of running around. But you can be around on show day next week. Are we going to do another uh, Coke freestyle machine episode? You know what? I, I'll double check. I, I think I can do that in the office because the, the conference is Thursday. So, never, never let um, it. Let me skip out on a Coke freestyle machine. Those things are good and or dangerous. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> all right. With the gang all assembled, plus a bonus, let's start right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for... The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading, what is lighting up our screens. It's another one of those kind of weird days. It depends where you hang your hat in the market, what kind of day you're having. If you're in the S&P, you're up slightly up about a quarter of a percent. But we're still north of that 41 half level. That's kind of a level we've been kind of vacillating around for a while, 4,100 to 41 half, hanging out around 4,170 as we kick off the show today. So a little bit north of that. Uh, the Dow, though, moving in the other direction off about half a percent. And the NASDAQ saying, yeah, let's just rally up nearly a full percent, about 0.9 percent right now. So very much a mixed day, kind of depending where you hang your hat out there. That means a little bit of a mixed market means mostly relaxing on the ball screen. VIX firmly in a 16 handle, 1660 as we kicked off the show, down about two-thirds of a point from where it was on Monday. Uh, VVIX, the vol of vol, retreating a bit from Monday's lofty levels down to about a 90. That puts it down about five points from where it was on Monday. VXX, 35 and a half, down a little over a point, about 1.2 points from Monday's level. Uh, UVXY, continuing to circle the bowl, 320, down two tenths of a point. SVIX, north of a 20 handle, 2010 actually, up about six tenths of a point. UVIX, going the other direction, nine and a half, down about almost three quarters of a point. And vol Q at about a 16 and three quarters. Down about half a point. So ball relaxing. I need a little bit of a pop between now and tomorrow to make my crystal ball prediction come to fruition. We shall see if that happens. But you know what? He's been traveling hither and yon. So let's get him 
into the rotation first, see if he remembers how to do this thing. Mr. Flowmaster, it's been an intriguing couple of weeks since we last chatted with you. What is lighting up your tape out there today, sir? Well, you know, it's it's um, it's been an interesting couple of weeks. It kind of feels a little sideways. We have had some decent moves, but we've also had some days where we barely moved, you know, S&P barely moved 15 handles, which is you know, kind of quiet. And you see it in the VIX, right? The VIX is now under 17, you know, flirting with 16 and a half, which is, uh, we were here briefly uh, in April, I think. Uh, but uh, I actually had a, a guy reach out to me last week and who was interested in looking at some VIX trades to hedge a, a portfolio. So we got to do the, the exercise where you compare uh, what would you kind of, you know, if you're going to if you're going to hedge an S&P portfolio, you can just buy SPX puts, right? Or you can think about buying VIX calls. But the translation is interesting, right? Because one, you can just buy the notional of the uh, of your portfolio. The other one, you have to kind of try to figure out, well, how much would VIX move if we had a big correction, and how much does my hedge need to make? So um, that was kind of fun, actually, because I hadn't done it in a while. Um, and um, you know, it's just been it's, it's been kind of a a nice mixed up market, you know, the, 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 the financial, the, our little mini banking crisis kind of seems to have faded from most people's memory. So, um, you know, we've just been, uh, you know, it's kind of been business as usual, I guess, but, you know, to me, that's nice because you, you have a nice balance of option strategies. Uh, you know, it's not all about zero DTE, although that, that wave is still, uh, still very strong. Um, but, you know, we, we also see plenty going on in ETFs and even in single stocks. Yeah, a lot to unpack, including a surprising amount of volume on the tape out there today. We'll get to that in a little bit as well, listeners. But first, let's keep going around the horn. Let's go out to the hinterlands of Chicago. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, I guess unless you're hanging out in the Dow, it's kind of an Uncle Mike type of day. So what's lighting up your tape out there today, sir? Yeah, I typically don't hang out in the Dow, so it is kind of an Uncle Mike type of day today. We're up uh, just under 10 points today on the S&P. <clears throat> uh, what's lighting up my tape right now, we're getting a little bit of a sell-off in the bond world. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see if we can come back from this. It's, I mean, it's not anything huge, but we've been in such a tight range in the bond world lately. Uh, we're at the, clo- the lower end of it right now, so it'll be interesting to see if buyers can come in on this like they have the last few times. In terms of the S&P, we still have not touched the 4,200 mark on the year. We have come close. We have tried. Uh, Today, we got up as high as 4,186, but we just can't seem to break 4,200 in 2023. And just looking at a chart of it, uh, we came close in February. We came close again, somewhat close in early April. A little close again in late April, close again in early May, and now we're close again. And I uh, thought today might be the day that we cross it, but we still have not done so as of yet. Uh, it is very, um, how do I put this, boring <laughs> in terms of market movement right now. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, 4195 is our high in the year, and I'd really like to see it go through 4200 because then... Uh, We'll hit a new high for the year, and uh, we could have even better things ahead uh, if that were the case. Uh, In terms of the commodity world, we have uh, oil still in the low 70s. We have natural gas in the mid twos up uh, just under 8% on the day, uh, which is normal for natural gas. Uh, But right now, uh, the main thing that I'm seeing that's uh, of interest today is that we are down roughly a half a percent in the 10-year, and uh, Bitcoin's still at 27,000. So that's what I'm seeing. And you bought all that BTC at 27,000, right, sir? You couldn't stop yourself. Um, and no, I didn't. <laughs> you know, it's a natural hedge against your Bitcoin really sucks.com. One way or the other, you're making banks, sir. Just it's a question of which way, right? Ooh, that, no, that, that, that's an interesting thought. Maybe I should go along some Bitcoin futures to protect my. $18 investment there you uh, go. of BitcoinReallySucks.com. <laughs> there you go. How could you lose? <laughs> Printing money. Making money no matter what happens, Uncle Mike. It's the definition of using options the right way. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if he goes down that rabbit hole. And speaking of rabbit holes, there's always some to be found on the shores of Maine. Mr. Rock Lobster, what rabbit holes are lighting up your tape out there today, sir? Well, I, you know, I'm... Uh... 
It's I, I wrote an article for our a newsletter about when last week when we had a kind of that contango was madness. Remember we talked about it on the show like last week? And last time we had that. How Matt could I forget it, sir? It is etched in my brain. And the Qs and the Qs had that like unreal rally in 2020. Um, I think since that show, the Q is up. <laughs> I don't know, 20 points. <laughs> it's it's quite a startling. Uh, it's it's quite a startling rally. Um, of course, I did blow my Q calls out yesterday instead of waiting till today to really make them actual real money on the trade. So what but, you're saying is when Contango is at its deepest, just load up on the cues. Well, it it's it is uh you know, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Just load up. There you <laughs> so, go. Done. Show's over. We're we're done. It it was well, the thing was it was also too it was there wasn't a lot of like vol action. Like Henry just said, the market hasn't moved. In, I believe, and I saw this, uh, some good guys on Twitter, some good data guys on Twitter. Not as good as Russell, of course, but still pretty good. Um, uh, that, you know, I think of the last 33 days, we only had two of the last 33 where that we finished um, uh, more than 1% away from 4130. So remember, we had the 4100 magnet. Uh, and I think that was... I think it was a record. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, maybe the listeners can uh, can chime in on that part. But astounding. And I'm pretty sure there's a debt ceiling thing going on. And I'm pretty sure we don't know if the banks are sound. And I'm pretty sure NVIDIA is trading at 140 times earnings. And... like. <laughs> But you know what? Nobody cares. Now, I will say, though, this the thing that has me kind of spooked about this rally, and, and semis are definitely leading the pack today. But, you know, Charles Schwab is down 65 cents. Um, let's see. We got, like, oil stocks in the, in the can. Um, nobody cares about gold at all. There's no, there's no worry. NVIDIA, they'll basically pay any price for again at this point. Netflix up 35 bucks. Uh, again, and we're just talking about how competitive streaming is, why right? Disney was getting shellacked. Um, so I, I guess you just have to say, uh, you know, but all of like, again, Main Street stocks not doing very well. The big tech stocks doing extraordinary. They've got to be up like 25% this year now, I think, or something like that. So it's pretty, it's a pretty astounding run. And folks don't care what they're paying for earnings right now. And I guess that's, it is still, is every fund in the world crowding into these stocks is my only, you know, and that's, I'm curious about what everybody else thinks, but I've been around long enough to know I don't ask questions why. I just see the fact that they keep going up, and I have no interest in being in the way of it. Um, so, and it could probably go up a lot more, to be quite honest. So, and I and I think that's you know that's where we are, and I somehow the most expensive, highest high big tech cap stocks trading at very rich multiples and multi-trillion dollar valuations where all the money in the market is going right now. So until that changes, it's been like that every day for a week, um, at least. And I don't see it changing anywhere. So someone, somehow, somewhere are, is driving these up. The difference between now, though, I will say, and the uh, big whale days is Apple volatility is in the teens. Um, Google volatility uh, in the teens, I believe, as well. I was just looking at it the other day. So, uh, uh, no, not quite. 20, 26, but it's it's still the low of the last year. So the difference between the rally this time and the chart of Google looks unbelievable, by the way. I guess they're the only AI stock, even though AI is a every AI company is a competitor, a real competitor for Google now, finally. But Google volatility, one year low. Apple volatility, one year low. Microsoft volatility, one year low. Um, I think it might be the best big tech vol buying extravaganza um, in history, I think, right now. Um, Because you have valuations straight up. 
You have massive contango. You can buy strangles like crazy in these stocks and buy a bajillion VIX puts and just let the movie play. It's it's an unbelievable opportunity in my view. But there you go. That's what I see. Intriguing stuff. We are also seeing a heck of a lot of paper out there today as well. It's If I just saw these numbers on my screen without any context, I would think this was a day when the market was moving 2 plus percent in one direction because there is paper just across the board in just about everything. For example, listeners, right now as we speak, 1.03 million contracts on the tape in VIX already. That's the kind of day we have when market's falling out of bed and VIX is exploding. I had to go dig in to see what the hell was going on out there in VIX land because it certainly ain't the underlying that's driving all this paper out there. So something clearly is afoot. And it looks like, Mr. Rock Lobster, did you notice this? Looks like they are perhaps bailing on some of the June 3040 and rolling it to the SEP 3545. So going up five handles here. They did that. Looks like about 160,000 by about 120,000 times. Mr. Rock Lobster, did you notice that one there? They, they finally getting the heck out of Dodge on some of that spread, sir? Uh, say that one more time. Sorry. The June 3040 call spread. You are familiar with it in VIX, correct? Oh, the big VIX one? Yes. They are bailing um, on it, it looks like. And Mark was saying it was going up. I thought they were putting more of it on today. Did they actually take well, it they're, off? They're doing a SEP, too. They're doing a SEP as well, and it all went up, I think, around the same time. Uh, Mr. Flowmaster, have you been noticing this uh, This June 30, 40? It looks like they're rolling to SEP, correct? Yeah, that's exactly it. I do have some of my – I have a privileged spot within – Debo, which is that we, we have even better access to the floor. And that's exactly it. And we watched them put it on um, the June one. I actually think that might have been a roll from another type of position, too. So um, it's, it's you, know, you know, as Andrew said, vol is weirdly low. You know, I mean, we've seen some really low realized vol, but, you know, it really does kind of, I like how he framed it, which is like there it's so much uncertainty out there. However, uh, maybe it's all kind of balancing out or something. And, um, you know, or, or maybe people are just feeling nice and, and positive um, and not worried about the debt ceiling or, or recession. Uh, I mean, I know yesterday's rally was on headlines that the Republicans and the Democrats were actually talking about the debt ceiling. And, um, you know, everybody seems to say that, that they'd be, everybody would be insane to kind of let that turn into a crisis. But, um, you know, and, and we did survive it in 2011. So, um, but yeah, it's a lot of, um, I don't know, another very smart guy that I talked to sent me a note the other day and all he said was optionality sure is cheap. So uh, I think people are kind of leaning into buying, you know, buying some gamma. Um, but at the same time, when you get, you know, three, four, five days of pretty muted moves that that idea gets less fun pretty quickly. Yeah, lately the gamma hasn't been uh, all that exciting, but today maybe might be the day where some of that starts to uh, break out there. Let's go to the rest of the volume. Like we said, VIX already blown off the doors. The the ADV is flirting with 800K, 798,000, already north of 1 million. Thanks again to this massive roll out there. So maybe that's a little bit of an aberrant indicator. But you know what? Let's look to SPY. SPY should be doing normal numbers today. Nope. 6.02 million contracts already. The ADV 8.1. Again, it's like we're just, the market's exploding in one direction today and taking a lot of volume with it. And yet it's kind of been vacillating for a lot of the day. Uh, The S, 1.8 million contracts already. The ADV 2.7. Small caps, 535,000. The ADV 1.05 million. The Qs, two and three quarters million contracts already. The ADV Two and three quarters million. So it's already there. It's already there, listeners. So it's one of those days, man. Paper just flying fast and furious. Unless you think it's a day where it's all macro focused and the micro, the single names has been forgotten. Let's fire up the old Flowmaster most actives over there on Trade Alert. Let's see what the top 10 most actives are today. And let's see if that's the case. And the answer is a resounding no to that as well, listeners. Cost you 318,000 contracts. To break into the top 10 most active today. That is that is a banger day. That when we're just talking about buck sixty a couple shows ago. So yeah, that's uh that's banger. And we get to our old friend now. I guess the new king of AI, it's Google. 
aka Alphabet, even though the Microsoft folks might have some issue with that, or maybe the NVIDIA folks, whichever camp you fall in, listeners. Goog L today, 123.10, up about two and a quarter. So another day where folks are just bidding up all things AI related, apparently. <laughs> so nice rally for them. And again, good for 318,000 contracts on the tape. Not to be outdone, Microsoft coming in at number nine saying, hold my beer, kid. We got AI too. 339,000 contracts on the tape for Microsoft. Up three, almost three and a half bucks. 317 and a half. So pretty much hitting a new all-time high here this week, I do believe. Definitely a 52-week high. Is that an all-time high as well? Yeah, I do. Oh, no. October, where did they get to? Back in 2021, they got to, no, 336. So not quite there, but closing in on a new all-time high, listeners. Uh, and again, good for 339,000 contracts. This is kind of a uh, an all-star top 10 today. Number nine, we got Baba <laughs> popping off again. China moving in the other direction. Apparently, today's the day China's off again. 407, man, we're at 407,000 already. We're only at number eight. Remember just a few shows ago, we had, we had that at number two. <laughs> 86.60 for Baba off $4.10 right now. And again, good for 407,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, number seven, the aforementioned Netflix. Rock Lobster just talking about them. Up 35 and a half handles today, 10 and a half percent, trading 375 and a half. They're at a new 52 week high pretty much as well. My goodness, what a banger day. Just when we saw with Disney maybe was streaming dead, now Netflix coming in and saying, you know, that ad-supported plan, we got 5 million people using it right now, so that's pretty good. Netflix, 610,000 contracts on the tape. My goodness. And you think Disney might be getting a nice little pop off that as well? No, only up about half a point or about half a percent, still trading 93 and a quarter, so not getting that streaming related love across the board number six this is kind of a bit of a trend now which is kind of interesting uh, apple getting kicked to the curb left right and center once again apple all the way down at number six even though it's doing decent paper seven hundred forty thousand contracts that's kind of like the apple norm now for this time of day apple up 180 trading right around 174 and a half so the market's happy apple is green on the day but a whole bunch of stocks kicking apple to the curb today including number five, the Amazonians, listeners, 753,000 contracts of the Amazonians. They're up two bucks, trading 117 and a half right now. So a decent day for them. They don't get as much love in the AI explosion we're seeing right now. I know I think they'd love to change that. <laughs> Obviously, they have a, a lot of skin in that game with things like AWS and things that where AI could be applicable. But you don't hear Amazon bandied about in that, in that conversation as much. So I'm sure they'd love to get all this rub that uh, Microsoft and Google and NVIDIA are getting driving the stock ever northward on the strength of AI. But today, getting some numbers and getting some upside, so they can't be too mad at that. Uh, number four, number four, the chip zone coming early and coming inverted once again. This whole AI thing has really flipped around our chip zone. Uh, NVIDIA kind of outpacing AMD these days, but AMD coming in at number four, no slouch itself, 784,000 contracts on the tape for AMD up three bucks, trading 106.70 within $3 of their 52 week high as well. So AMD just on the rampage, as they say out there. 784,000 contracts for number four. Number three, this will make uh, the rock lobster less grumpy today. It's Palantir, 870,000. And ever since I decided not to sell those puts going into their last earnings, they're up like four bucks. <laughs> so that's been the, the, just, the, just the kiss of success for them. Up a buck and a quarter today. Or, 12% trading $11.5. I don't know what the news is today about Palantir. Maybe the Rock Lobster does, but something is popping Palantir hard out there. Obviously, their recent earnings were a nice surprise for people, and that's driven the stock up. And now Palantir catching that next leg up. Good for 870000 When's the last time we saw Palantir this high in our countdown, listeners? It's been a while. Okay, strap in, listeners, because this one doesn't happen too often. Number two. Yes, I said number two is Tesla, a paltry one and a quarter million contracts on the tape, listeners. When's the last time something kicked Tesla to the curb? It takes a lot to make that happen. But apparently today is that day. Tesla, 175.16, up a buck 30 or about three quarters of a percent. And they've had a topsy-turvy ride, obviously. People hoping that Musk appointing a new CEO of Twitter will allow him to focus some more time on Tesla, whether that's a good thing or bad thing. I guess that depends on your viewpoint on Musk and on Tesla. 
They've had a rocky road over the last few months. Uh, but again, have a nice little pop today. But it can't top our number one player out there, listeners. The AI tide lifting all boats, in particular NVIDIA, up $14, 4.65%, uh, trading nearly 316 right now, and pretty much at their 52 week high as well. So just an explosion for NVIDIA. They cannot get enough. The Rock Lobster was not joking. Their PE is 181. <laughs> So I think we're back to the old days. Uh, back when I first walked on the floor of the Seabone, everything was exploding to the upside. People will say, what is that name doing that? Who cares? It was .com at the time, or it was, it's web. Now it's who cares? It's AI. Because 181 PE, that should give anyone pause. And yet, here we are. Rally ho, baby. So, wow. 1.3. What a crazy day we have in store for us. A bit of a crazy week out there as well. Earnings season still in Hot supply listeners, Home Depot yesterday, the container stores. If you want to see what's going on with high priced container ball, got it yesterday. I got Tuesday, I should say. Wednesday, Target, Jack in the Box, and Cisco and Stone Cold, our old friend Stone Cold. Thursday, we had Alibaba today as well as Walmart. And tomorrow, we got John Deere and Foot Locker out there. Well, luckily for you, because we like you folks, we have updated earnings move, earnings move results, earnings season, and earnings trades reports hot off the presses. For you folks coming in right before showtime, let's pull up Target really quickly here. They were popping off today before the bell. 158 was where they were trading. They're pricing in 11 and a quarter. In the past, they moved 11.83. So that was actually yesterday before the bell. So that's not a heck of a lot of different juice at all. And let's see where Target is hanging out right now. Oh, they're off about, looks like about four bucks. So four, a little, little over four. So they moved a wee bit, but far less than what they were pricing in. We'll skip Cisco in deference to Uncle Mike. Our buddy Stone Cold yesterday after the bell, thirteen eighty one. They're pricing in a buck seventy two. In the past, they've moved two dollars and ten cents. That's not a that's not a small amount of juice for a thirteen dollar stock. And they're trading thirteen thirty four, so they're off about fifty cents. So dramatic underperformance there as well. Uh, we got Alibaba. They were today before the bell eighty five and a third. They're pricing in five and a half bucks. In the past, they've moved a little north of four. And they're off about 420 right now. So they're moving almost exactly. Actually, they just ticked 413. So they they have in the past, their average is $4.12. So they're moving almost exactly in line with their previous average listeners. So uh, intriguing stuff there. Of course, uh, the earnings season hanging out right now, 94%. 638 names reporting right now, which pretty much is in line with our long-term average of 96% right now as well. So intriguing stuff. You want to check all that out. Theoptionsinsider.com is the place to go. Click on the Options News and Articles tab to check out all of that data. As we keep on rolling, find some more data. It is time to unleash the eye of Sauron. It is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, welcome to The Odd Block, the portion of the show where we get weird, we get wild, we unleash the eye of Sauron and see what it has in store for us today. We also sometimes unleash the eye of the Flowmaster. See what he's keeping an eye on out there. We'll start there. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, you're like Roz from Monsters, Inc. You're watching, always watching these markets and the flow. What is catching your eye out there today, sir? Uh, Well, I have one I saw yesterday in uh, Liberty A, which is, I know there's a bunch of Liberties. Liberty A is, I think, the broadband cable company. And um, yesterday we saw about 10,000 of the June 17 and a half calls bought in a couple of sweeps, but it was mostly around 60 cents. And what was interesting was the there was about 10,000 contracts of open interest. But when I looked at that, it was from a week before also trading on the offer side. So it looked like kind of a buyer doubling up and the open interest confirms that. And the stocks are really kind of right around there. So 20,000 at the money calls in, in June in Liberty. Uh, Liberty A is, is a pretty big position. Um, and you know, I think we could kind of see some interesting whipping around there. 
Uh, and then there was a funky one yesterday. Actually, you guys, a couple of you get this, you know, the, the biggest winners uh, little morning report that, that we send out. And this one, I've even, I don't think I've ever heard of this stock, but uh, R-Y-A-M is the symbol. It's Rainier Advanced Materials, but it's some sort of a paper pulp company based in Florida. But somebody bought about 14,000 of the two and a half puts yesterday. Uh, stock was around four bucks. And the stock sold off a little bit from there, but the vol went up about 20 points from like 130 to 150 at that strike. Um, so that that customer was up about 60 percent on that trade. So those two were the um, were the ones that that really kind of caught my eye in the last couple of days. Uh, and you know, you're right. Today's volume is really heavy. It looks like we'll we'll easily beat 50 million contracts, which is pretty great because the average in the first quarter was around 45 million, but you know, since uh, the beginning of April, things have kind of slowed down to closer to 39 million. So it's nice to see a couple big days um, coming through. And um, I don't know there's a put buyer in PLTR Palantir today. I think that's a name that you guys occasionally um, talk about. But that's it for me. A lot to unpack there. Uh, we'll start really quickly on that Liberty Global. That's PLC Class A ticker symbol LBTYA. Listeners trading 17 and a quarter. Right now, on the year, a bit of a bumpy road. It was 23 bucks a year ago. Got up to the high of the year of 25.13. Then they crushed it for $15.62. That was back in October of last year. Then they rallied it again up to about 22 in February before crushing it back down to 17 and a quarter right now. And as the Flowmaster said, someone loading up on some calls out there yesterday, which is kind of kind of intriguing out there in good old the June 17 halves, 10,000 of those going up yesterday. So at the money calls in Liberty Global. And then yeah, yeah, RYAM, that is definitely a newcomer to us. Rainier Advanced Materials. Uh, they specialize in cellulose-based products, <laughs> high-performance fibers for products. Uh, go figure, lumber is on the rampage. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on Twifo with our buddy Mr. Dan Gramza coming up. So probably that's maybe uh, playing a bit of a part in this uh, ticker symbol RYAM. Listeners trading 4.15 right now, off about 11 cents on the year. A year ago, it was trading 4 dollars and 90 cents. They crushed it to its low for the year of 2.44. That was in June of last year. Then they rallied it up, up to the high for the year of 9 dollars and 84 cents. That was back in right at the beginning of this year, January 4th. And then they crushed it again by January 20th. It was trading 5.68. Then they rallied it up again to eight and a third on March 2nd. And since then, it's pretty much been straight down to where it is again right now. Four dollars and fifteen cents. So again, a wild ride. Anything lumber associated? I was just talking about this with our producers uh, before the show today. Uh, you know, if you had guessed since the pandemic, what is the most volatile thing on the planet? You might say Bitcoin. You might say nat gas. A few other things, but it's it's dead trees. It's lumber. They have been moving and shaking, rocking and rolling for whatever reason. Those futures and the options on those futures can't really catch a volume bid out there. So we don't get a chance to talk about lumber options volume too often. On Twife, I wish we could because the underlying is just is ridiculous. It is moving all over the place. Dead trees, the most volatile thing on the planet by a country mile. And yet uh, no, no joy out there in Mudville. And out there, what do we see? We saw the two half puts going up 14,000 times, as the Flowmaster said today, for 25 cents. So they're not playing. Two half puts in August. They expect this thing uh, to apparently get almost cut in half out there over the next few months. So that's intriguing in and of itself. Mr. Rock Lobster, Henry was talking about your friend Palantir. Let's go out there as well right now. You know the deal, listeners. Ticker symbol PLTR. It's on our Movers and Shakers top 10 today. I haven't seen that in a while. Uh, on the year, it's been an intriguing year. A year ago, it was trading $8. Then it got up to 11 and a half bucks on August 5th of last year. Then they crushed it down to its low of pretty much 6 bucks, a little bit below, five ninety two. That was in December of last year. Then they tried to rally it, got up to 10 bucks in February. Then right back down to seven and change in March. And it was hanging out right there about seven and a half, seven forty. That's where I was looking at it, heading into earnings, thinking about maybe selling some puts. If you know, listen to options oddities, I have gotten burned a little bit selling puts, even at these levels in Palantir in the past. I wasn't super enthused, but I thought at that level it was fairly safe. As usually happens, listeners, life intervenes, shows intervene, miss the sale. And then, of course, the earnings explode and it's been off to the races <laughs> since March or May 5th, excuse me. It was seven forty one. It is now eleven dollars and forty two cents. It's up pretty much exactly four dollars from that level. So an impressive run for Palantir. We got a couple of the trades lighting it up out there today in Palantir. First off, 
We got a, a size, looks like a put roll, Mr. Rock Lobster. It was the AUG 11.9 put spread going up 6,000 times. A uh, paper buying the 11s, selling the 9s, doing that for looks like, what is that, 76 cents. And uh, they are closing the 9s, rolling up the 11s. So it makes sense. If you got protection on the 9 strike, the stock is exploding up through the 11 strike. It makes sense to take some of that opportunity to tighten up a little bit of that protection. Uh, worth noting that that covers you through earnings. The next earnings are on August 7th. So this person now it has a nice tight bit of protection on here on these puts. Uh, worth noting is a lot of paper going up in Palantir, as you mentioned today. It's, it's a mover and shaker today. We also noticed a decent small lot of upside opening calls. It was the July 14s, one fours, going up for about 35 cents through the offer. The offer was 34 cents, so they went up for about 35. Somebody really had to have them. Their stock was trading about 11.30 when these went up. That's about a 58 vol. Uh, so also, again, earnings are in August, so not going to get any earnings juice with those. So Mr. Rock Lobster, a, a lot to unpack. First off, uh, you love yourself some Palantir. So if you have any thoughts on, on someone rolling their protection, also swinging for some fences on some upside calls, have at it. And then B, if you have any thoughts on the Flowmasters, Liberty Global, or Ryam, have at it, sir. Uh, so for the Palantir, yeah, I, I guess I'm going to be taken out of my stock, and I sold the last of my calls today. So, oh, you're done. Uh, you're out. Well, I and I, you know what, I I kind of have the doofus trade. I I put I bought a ten call calendar um, about a couple of days ago, thinking, oh, you know, it would be an easy run here. <laughs> it's just going to sit here at go ten up. forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, I, I think a day after I pay bought it, I think it was trade nine forty five. Why didn't you tell me that? Because I would have bought all like the fifteen calls I could have bought if you, I knew, I knew <laughs> exactly. you did that calendar. Yeah, that was the signal, and then I, <laughs> and then I, I think I was up two cents on the call calendar, and I'm like, ah, oh, you know, it's at the strike. Nobody wants a stupid stock. <laughs> I think the next two days was up another dollar and a half. So um, I did have to buy some calls to just keep the delta flat, and then I'm still now I'm just trying to get out of the calendar for whatever I can get for it. Um, so it'll end up being a big nothing. Uh, although the rest of the position did fine. Um, you know, this is one of those stocks where early on there was huge buzz about it because, you know, of their AI stack and their, you know, all of this stuff and everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now this, you know, now they're turning a profit and sales are big and folks are going into it. Like, could it be a $20 stock this year? Yeah. I mean, and now that now my problem is like now I have to go in back through the risk reversal because um, I don't want to just sell puts, but um, I'm going like back in via risk reversal. So I'll probably like sell. You can get some money for selling the 10 puts in July. So I figured I was taken out at I'll be taking out my effective price is like 11, uh, 10, 75. Um, so that got me back on the year to ended up for my Palantir trading ended up being pretty good. Um, but I'm going to go back in via like risk reversal now. Like I, I don't think, I don't think it's a $7 stock anymore, but you know, the market could do weird things as usual, but I'll probably, I don't have any problem re-entering around 10. So I think it's now it's officially a risk reversal stock. for me. Like, so the July 10, 14 looks good. Um, I'll let today cool off a little bit. Um, but, but I think, yeah, I think it has. And I think that's what kind of the paper is, you know, they're like, Hey, they're going to buy those for they're just going to pay 34 cents for them and go for it. So I I think um uh and it and appears that maybe somebody's aggressively trading that roll or they're buying they're rolling up their put spread maybe protecting their stock from a lower level cuz now I mean if you know cuz we <laughs> we got put at, at different prices like 7 once, 8 once I think, 9 once and <laughs> put it like every price and was able just to do the, you know, the the call roll out of it uh, until the last one. And now I finally sold some calls higher up. So, um, but I, I think it looks like this person is, you know, trying to, uh, you know, they want to, I think, protect a gain possibly uh, is all I can tell on that roll. But I, I don't think the 14 calls are unreasonable, but I've learned enough in this stock. Everybody gets excited and it sits like a pig for like three straight months. So as much as I like it, I don't want to net by any pay for any calls in it. Um, I'll take the, I'll take the margin risk, but I don't, I don't know. I've learned just to not buy net naked calls in this one. <laughs> <laughs> 
let's keep on rolling. Since we got the flow master, let's, let's do one more because we're having so much fun out here, listeners. And again, it is, it is an embarrassment of riches out there today. I heard someone say earlier on the show, no one cares about gold. Maybe they should tell the folks out there at Barrick Gold because the stock's selling off. Stock's at 1780 off about two thirds of a point, about three and a half percent on the year. Let's see, a year ago it was about 20 bucks. They hit it to its low of 1310. That was back in November. And it hit a recent high, looks like, of about close to 2140. Actually, that looks like that was back a year. So, yeah, the high recently was about 20 and a half. So, still pretty lofty levels. Now it's trading 1780, selling off about 60 cents today. But it looks like we got what looks like a pretty funky and sizable, potentially bullish risk reversal. Don't see these too often out here in uh, Barrick Gold. Uh, worth noting, the, I should say these aren't opening, so it could be someone taking off potentially a collar out here as well. I didn't, I didn't have a chance to go back and look for that. But we did notice here, first off, 23,000 of the June 22 calls coming up off for four cents. Now, paper selling those, which is kind of interesting. So again, could be unwinding, paper buying those, I should say, which could be the unwinding of, a, of the short call leg of a collar. And then we also have against it 23,000 of the June 19 puts going up for a buck 56. Looks like selling those kind of near the bid there. And then looks like buying 23,000 of the June 17 puts for 36 cents. Again, this all went up as a spread with the stock right around 17 and two thirds. This just came up right before showtime. So I haven't had a chance to go look. But again, this is not opening. So there's a chance this is closing. Mr. Flowmaster, did you notice this size? You don't see bullish risk reversals going up too much, which is probably my first sign that it's probably unwinding a collar. And then B, the fact that it's not opening, also a good hint. Is that your takeaway as well, sir? Uh, I'm looking at it right now. And um, because it's one of our trades, I can see the customer side of it in that open-close data, uh, which you can see if you kind of zoom in at the contract level. Um, It's the 1719 put spread against the June 22 calls. And they're selling the package for a buck 16. And I do agree that it looks like uh, this is dollar sixteen to sell the put spread. Uh, I do think it's probably a closer, just based on the fact that the open interest is pretty close there. Although it looks like they kind of got in. Um, looks like they might have gotten in in early April. They got in on April fourth. Yeah, they did yeah, it on April fourth when the stock was nineteen dollars and sixty two cents. I used your own tools to find it faster nice. than you. Look at me. That's. That's that's a beautiful thing. That is kind of the <laughs> point of trailer is to make it a little easier to figure out what the heck happened back then. Um, I mean, it's an interesting one. I told you, I think, on a couple calls that that I, you know, I've been long uh, Anglo Gold for a while, and I didn't really remember why, but it did have a heck of a run um, from March. Now, now, Barrick did not quite participate in that, um, so I'm not too sure. But it's funny, like on a day like today, like the, these gold names really have gotten. Um, hit pretty hard in the last couple of weeks. And, and I guess that's kind of because, you know, the crisis seems to be passing, uh, you know, the, the flight to gold when, when people are scared. It's still a thing. It's not quite as strong a thing as it was before crypto and other, and some other easy to trade assets. But, um, but yeah, it does look to me like this is probably a closer. We'll know for sure tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it's a nice chunky trade. It's like they might have done a ratio. It's like they did 46,000 of the 17 puts, in which case they got uh, more 17 puts to go here, listeners, which those are actually about a scratch. It's like they bought them for around 38 cents. So uh, those are kind of scratching. But intriguing stuff nonetheless here. Size, size, unwinding potentially uh, of a collar here, listeners, in good old Barrett Gold. As we keep going to unwind the rest of the show, it is time for the mail call. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. Mail Call would be the show we did yesterday. Mail Block, of course, the option block mail segment today. I want to get your thoughts like Uncle Mike really quick. We didn't get a chance to get your thoughts on our listeners' thoughts from this past week when we did our Kind of check in with the audience, see how they're positioning their portfolios right now. We said in your troubled times, where are you allocating the majority of your portfolio? Cash, crypto, equities, or commodities slash fixed income? 45.6% coming in on the cash side, which kind of surprised me. I know, Uncle Mike, you're kind of our resident permable 
Or were you surprised that nearly half of our option-savvy audience coming down on the cash side, sir? Not really, because if you are, if if you're cautious, right now is not a bad time to be in cash, paying in the four percent area uh, with uh, money markets or whatever way with which you look at. So I, I can't say that I'm that surprised, um, but uh, understand that it is a conservative move over time. In my opinion: stocks will outperform cash. No other major asset class has beaten stocks uh, over the last hundred years or so. So. Um, just have that understanding. But if you're concerned with things and you want to be a little bit more risk averse at this point in time, uh, cash is not a bad place to be. Cash, not a bad place to be. You are correct here. And let's keep on rolling. I want to squeeze as many of you folks in as I can here before we get to around the block. Let's get to this one from uh, Invest Online. He sent this in actually to our Options Bootcamp show, but I want to make sure we touch on it here because we got the flow master here and I can't think of a person better suited to answer this question who has his finger on the pulse of all of the different options, analytics, and trading software side out there. Uh, Invest Online wants to know, he says, the first off, he says, hello, options gods. Well, hello to you. Flattery will get you everywhere there, Invest Online. Then he wants to know, is there a program or service for visualizing options pricing changes in real time? And he puts in parentheses, calls versus put pricing changes that can be used for market sentiment. You know, we touched on this in some of our other shows this week. It's kind of a weird question. I I suppose it sounds like he's asking straight call versus put, looking maybe for some synthetic opportunities. I think that's what he's looking for. It doesn't sound like he's talking about skew. But uh, Mr. Flowmaster, like I said, you have your finger on the pulse of all things trading technology over there in the the vast SIBO analytics empire. Can you think of anything that would work for Mr. Invest Online for what he's looking for? Um. I, I, I think that most of the people that I talk to, you know, I, I, the market's very efficient, right? So things that move around that really just dis- display sentiment are tend to be volatility, right? Skewness and level in vol terms. And that's what, that's how, you know, you and I, all of us tend to think. Um, that said, I mean, flow matters, right? And that's, that's kind of, you know, been the, the evolution of things. So, um, I mean, you know, I, I'll certainly out, you know, Trade Alert and Cebo Live Vol and the tools that we have and, and the API that we have, which would let you build something custom, um, does let you get at a lot of high level data um, to kind of see the price changes. But, but you know, I, I don't know if you can look at kind of price changes of calls versus puts and get much out of that. You have to, you have to dig deeper into the data. Um, but, you know, I love to kind of look at uh, show me the net delta in a symbol, meaning, you know, are people buying calls and selling puts and if so how big is that delta relative to the average daily stock volume that i think starts to get you something really interesting in the concept of a a delta pressure model and what's how's the stock reacting uh in the context of how the overall day is so um i would say play around with with all the systems you can get access to i don't know um the question specifically about your price action to use in terms of sentiment um I think there's so many different ways to go at it that um, I'd have to I'd have to know a little more about how how they think. I don't see the utility of that straight call versus put visualization. I don't see what you're getting out of that. Uh, maybe if he means more of a skew type thing, then you're right. You know, live ball is a bunch of that kind of stuff, and most brokers will have some sort of basic skew uh, analysis software at least, so you can at least do it that way. But if you're talking to straight call put same strike kind of synthetic looking thing, yeah, I don't, I don't see a ton of utility for that. So maybe again. Give us a little bit more details on what you're looking for there and best online. Maybe we can help you. We'll roll out of here on this. It's just a straight comment uh, from X Open Outcry Local. He says, love the show. It's a staple every Monday and Thursday. Well, thank you. We love all you folks. Take the time to tune in as we keep on rolling and go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for... Around the Block. All right, listeners, let's do it. Let's go around the block, see what everyone is keeping an eye on until our Monday episode. Let's go out to the sleepy environs of St. Charles first. Let's see if we can wake up Uncle Mike on this kind of Uncle Mike type of day, which, by the way, listeners, as we're talking, it seems like the markets have retreated a little bit. The S&P only up about a tenth of a percent now. NASDAQ up about two-thirds of a percent. It was closing in on a full percent earlier in the show and the Dow selling off nearly six tenths of a percent. So maybe 
that early bloom, the market coming off the rose, which, of course, a little bit of a whipsaw. That's only going to drive more paper on this very paper every day out there. But Mr. Uncle Mike, looks like maybe the Uncle Mike is starting to come off the market today. Uh, what are you keeping an eye on until our Monday episode? Uh, just <clears throat> I want to see if we we have a shot at 4,200. Um, we came close today and want to see if we can get that. And uh, watching everything macro, uh, as you pretty much have to these days. And uh, once again, politics is going to be back soon, folks. Uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but... Uh, uh, you're, you're going to start hearing more political stuff in the, in the coming months. So just continue to prepare for that. And Mr. Rockloff, the same question for you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on until the Monday episode? Um, well, to see if the cues can continue driving, you know, the market like higher and higher and the market, you just keep paying up. And this looks kind of like a squeezy trade. I know Henry and Mike and you have, we've, we've seen, Everybody pile into the same thing before, and it looks, uh, I just think the opportunity here is totally different. Um, so that's, I wanted to see if the pricing keeps playing out. Um, so uh, that's what I'm, you know, I'm going to try to add here with my uh, pro, pro students at uh, when we have our class at three o'clock and try to, you know, price all this stuff up. Um, uh, and that's, and, and another thing too is VIX continues to, in my view, to discount like the cash VIX, you know, they're discounting. I know, I know the market's going up a little bit and that takes VIX down. Um, but I like the market, like as basically like there's no debt, the debt deal, there's no worry about it. They're going to come up with some kind of compromise, whatever, and they don't care. So I'm just saying that's as of right now today, that's what they're looking for. So I find it, um, uh, I find it uh, interesting, um, to say the least. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I just, you know, you have you have recent highs and recent lows in vol generally is an opportunity. So, um, and I would tell anybody that uh, listener, you know, Henry's product uh, with the flow and live all, I mean, it's, if you know how to use that tool, you can get a lot of, you can get a lot of information out of it. Plus the Excel spreadsheet we use for um powering a lot of sheets like you have like 15 different spreadsheets that run off of uh that live vol excel product at option pit so you can create the stuff you want um you know just kind of option pit and buy it from us <laughs> but we do we do have all that stuff we do have like change and skew even so um we have those goodies if you want them so come on over Good goodies. I'm just, I'm just still excited that I beat the Flowmaster to finding uh, the origins of that trade on his own platform. I feel like I've graduated to the <laughs> next level now. Mr. Flowmaster, you have trained me well, sir. Oh, first off, before we get there, uh, what are you keeping an eye on until when maybe you and I sit down next week and have some delicious Coke freestyle? Uh, I like to mix the, uh, the, the diet cream soda with some of the orange Fanta. Ooh, in the a little creamsicle um, action. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know what I've been playing around with is, uh, Yacibo came out with the VIX one day and, um, it's just a cat, you know, just a spot index calculated from the, the zero day and the one day SPX options, which are so active, but, um, but, but I've been talking to a lot of people trying to kind of unpack that and see how to use it as an indicator. Um, there's nothing tradable on it, but, uh, really just to see, you know, it, you know, most people that watch volatility knows the short dated vols whip all over the place. So that relationship between short dated vol and longer dated VIX, and th there's even, there's even a longer one. I think there's a one year VIX ticker as well. So kind of playing around with the data, um, analytics that are coming out of our, the SIBO labs group is, is really pretty cool. And then we're always, we're always working on, you know, new enhancements, um, you know, trying to find some of these. The, the big, crazy, aggressive sweeps, which, um, you know, as, as Andrew so kindly said, they, they have, there's some really great information in there. There's opportunity. Um, you know, it, you have to do your homework, but, um, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a really favorable trading environment, uh, this year, you know, and, and, you know, true, there's a lot of kind of, we could still get some really ugly shocks and those, those, those can be really tough to deal with. But in the meantime, um, you know, we're just kind of, Wiggling around. It's, it's some fun times. That music means the fun times, at least for this show, have come to a conclusion. Don't worry, the listeners, if you want more fun times in your lives, stay tuned. If you're listening live, uh, we'll pump some fun stuff in. I'll be back in a little bit with our buddy, Mr. Dan Graham. So the whole court on all things lighting it up 
over there on Twifo. Going to talk some dead trees, probably, as well as who knows is going to make it on rates, metals, ags, energy. You got to tune into the show to find out. But before we do that, let's go around the horn, see what everyone has cooking that may interest you. Let's start where we just ended up. We'll start with the Flowmaster, Mr. Flowmaster, sir. If folks want to kick the tires and light the fires on all this cool stuff cooking up over there in the land of SIBO, maybe they too want to get to the level where they can beat the Flowmaster looking up some trades. Where should they go? What should they do, sir? I am truly impressed that, that you know that stuff that well. Just go to SIBO.com slash RMA, which stands for Risk and Market Analytics, and um, you can see what we have, and you can request a trial, and we're always happy to help you out. There you go. Request that trial, listeners. Again, if you listen to these shows, you like it, you like playing around with uh, the Eye of Sauron and all the most actives, all the fun stuff that we do. A lot of that stuff originates back there in the hallowed halls and the dark side of trade alerts and also fun just to look up some of the history of the trades as well so hit them up over there and get that free trial i think free trial i think you're going to like what you find and mr uncle mike sir where should folks go if they want to learn more about all things uncle mike check out my website st charles wealth.com if you want to learn a little bit more about me and what i do as a financial advisor in the options space quite uh, quite frequently and uh, if you want to just keep an eye out for my content follow me on twitter at mike tusa t-o-s-a-w and last but not least, Mr. Rock Lobster, if they want to go get those good goodies over there in Option Pit, where should they go? What should they do? All right, 888-TRADE-01. Uh, ask our customer care team. So probably get Ted or Andrew and 10% off anything. Uh, also, we do uh, we do have Live Vol Pro for $350 a month with our uh, Edge Hunter spreadsheets. We have 15 of them. Uh, basically grabbing every market trade possible. Uh, so if you want to look at uh, how the vol of the trade is shaping up before you put the trade on. Uh, we have all of that available uh, to our students. So, uh, and a lot of our pros use them every day. Uh, I use the same sheets for trade creation. So we use what we sell on a daily basis. And uh, we've been a partner with SIBO now for, oh my gosh, six or seven years. So anyway, I feel like I'm getting old already. Um, anyway, and that's it for uh, that's it for me at uh, Option Pit. There you go. Option Pit. Dot com is the place to go. We got to get on out of here. Back again in a little bit for all things this week in futures options and back again tomorrow. Once a future, Dr. Vix joining us again to break down the week that was on the vol front with volatility views, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. And then after that, for options oddities for all you pro cats. Then back again on Monday, another episode of the Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index. For in-depth and relevant information, SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.ciboe.com com slash vix today to learn more you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs visit the options or search for options insider radio network in your podcast provider of choice listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the itunes and google play stores Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.